What is up y'all? My name is Scott and I am an outdoor adventure videographer and photographer. I was recently doing a product shoot and I figured I would do a lighting breakdown for you all in case you need to capture any images of this type. For this video, we'll be capturing a Leatherman. This isn't the product I was actually shooting when I came up with this lighting scenario, but this is a really flexible and diverse setup that you can use for a lot of different types of products. I'm shooting with the GH5 tethered to a PC so we can send those images directly into Lightroom so we can see what we're working with and if we're happy with the final shot. So the first step of this process is to get everything set up on the computer so that the images are automatically importing from the tethered software into Lightroom. So first thing we need to do uh, is make sure we have the Panasonic tether software installed. And the main thing we have to check here is inside settings. And we need to tell it that we want the storage location to be the memory card and the PC. So it'll send the files to the computer. And then we need to set an import location for the files. And so for that, I've just specified it's in the Leatherman shoot and it's inside of a temp folder. And we need a separate folder because this is where Lightroom is going to look for the files to pull them into the main Leatherman shoot folder. Otherwise, uh, I just make sure raw file transfer is turned on. We can hit save here. And inside Lightroom, you cannot use the automatic tether capture feature in here. It doesn't work with the GH5, but you can go to auto import and auto import settings. Enable auto import needs to be turned on. And then we'll set a watch folder. And the watch folder is that temp folder that we set up inside the Panasonic capture software and we'll have it move the images into the Leatherman shoot folder here. So the images now, when we capture them with the software or push the shutter button on the camera, will automatically get pulled into Lightroom and we can see them big and make any corrections. I find it's really critical to see them on the big screen and be able to zoom in, see if anything is out of focus, if the positioning isn't quite right. And I really like to have these two monitors set up. It allows me to have the live view up here and Lightroom here, and I can compare the image of what what I just shot to what I'm about to shoot. Especially when you're working with small objects, it's really important to make sure you're checking your focus and that the positioning is just right because a really small movement will actually make a big difference on the image. So now we're gonna jump over to the actual setup that we have and I'll show you the different lights that I'm using and we'll create a couple different images from this lighting setup so you can see uh, how it's really flexible and you can play with it to get something that works for you. This is the product that we're shooting. I've got it set up here on just a simple white background. Uh, it's, it's just a piece of poster board. It's attached to a light stand just via this clip here. This gives us a nice seamless background that we can punch out in post if we need to, or just have it be simple. You could do this as a color or something like that. This is my personal Leatherman. It's not in the best condition, so you'll probably see a little bit of damage to it in the photos. I've got the camera set to f5.6. This gives us a little bit of depth of field to work with so that most of the object will be in focus, uh, but the background will be blurred. And you can't go too much narrower when you're working this close to something because you actually will not have the whole thing in focus and it just doesn't look very good. The main light that we're using in this is the Aperture 120D. This is a great key light. It gives you a lot of power and I'm running it through this nice diffuse softbox so that we get a, a softer light on the image. The second light that we'll be working with is an Aperture HR672S. I've got that mounted here on this arm. And this is primarily to give us some background separation so that the background pops a little bit from the rest of the image. This will be the start for this lighting setup. One little tip I find really helpful um, when you're working with stuff like this is to get yourself one of these cans of uh, spray air and you can kind of lightly blow any sort of particles or anything like that that result in a lot of work in post having to clean those up. I also did my best to shine up the Leatherman a little bit. Like I say, it's not in perfect condition, but for the most part, it'll work. We've got the Ninja set up on top of the GH5. This just lets me do those fine adjustments and have it right in front of me while I'm making those adjustments. So we can take a look at where the image stands right now and uh, we'll go over to the computer and we'll take a shot. We'll just wait a moment and it'll get pulled right into Lightroom. So it's a little bit dark, not really that interesting. I think we're gonna try cranking up our key light just a little bit. I'm just gonna use the remote that comes with the aperture. Um, next thing we'll do is we'll pop on our back light. And so you can see the difference there. It gives a nice look. Let's shoot this shot and see what we're working with. So we've got a little bit more light in the image now. It's looking a little bit nicer. Another thing that I was playing with with this earlier that looks kind of cool is if I actually turn off my key, 
we get this really neat backlight. I'll take a shot of that. Kind of a neat setup. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is we'll pop that key back on. Um, and then I'm going to add a piece of foam core. So the foam core is just to cut some of the shadows that are in this area of the image and soften things up a little bit and give some light to this side of the object. And so I'm just using a bit of gaff tape. And you can see that gave us a little bit more light in the, the left-hand side of the image. We'll go ahead and capture that. So that's looking pretty nice. I'd like to see a little bit of a highlight here. Um, it's a reflective thing. And so what we can do is if we actually just add a piece of foam core in here, it'll give us a little bit of a specular highlight that I think shows off that it's a metallic object. And so let's, let's take this shot. So that's looking pretty nice. I think the last thing I wanna play with is trying to add a little bit of colored light. And so for this, we use the Epicure M9, something like that. We'll take that shot. Yeah, looks okay. I think we're gonna try popping off the key again and then we'll crank up the blue a little bit. It's kind of cool. Try that as a lighting setup. So that's a simple lighting setup that you can use for product photography. I hope you'll give it a try. You can play with the positioning of the lights, the intensity, the color, all that sort of stuff to get a bunch of different looks. But using something straightforward like this that you can cycle a lot of different items through allows you to create a whole catalog of images that look similar. You can punch out the background if you need to with Photoshop and create a really nice look for your client. If you've got any questions about this lighting setup, feel free to drop me a comment down below. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll think about hitting that subscribe button. But until the next video, get out there, make something beautiful, and I will see you all soon. Peace.